What did you do with your photographs from 2020? Are they lying about in a digital archive somewhere? Well, I decided to put mine into a photo book. And in this video, I'll show you how I did it and I'll tell you why I did it. Last year, I created this book, a retrospective collection of my landscape photographs covering the years 2009 to 2019. I did it with Sal Digital and I was really impressed with the final output. It was a great way to celebrate a decade of landscape photography. But as a result of that, I made a commitment to myself that I would therefore create a new book every year as a celebration of my landscape photography for that year. And that's where this book comes in, my collection of 2020 landscape photographs. So in this video, as well as showing you what the final product looks like, I'll quickly take you through the process of creating the book. Before I place any photographs into the book, the first thing I've got to do is find the photographs that I want to put into the book. Now, because I've got a quite a distinct theme for this book, which is my 2020 set of uh, images, it's gonna be quite easy for me to find these, particularly because I keep my Lightroom catalog quite well organized. I've got quite a robust process for importing, editing, and tagging my images. Now, if you want to know how I manage my Lightroom catalog, I have done a video on that. Uh, I'll include a link for that in the video description below, but I'll show you how easy it is for me to find all my 2020 landscape images. So I've already got uh, a smart collection set up here. If I have a look at that, you can just see it's got a date range there of 1st of January to the 31st of December, it contains a keyword landscape and has a star rating of three or above. And that gives me a pool of 197 images uh, to, to select from. Now that is obviously quite a lot of uh, photographs and there's no way all of them are gonna be worthy to put in the book. So what I need to do is I need to try and down select some of those photographs uh, to give me a more reasonable collection. And that's the second stage and probably the hardest bit is actually selecting which photographs go into the book because you can have quite an emotional attachment to some of these pictures and deciding whether, you, whether it's worthy to be in the book can be quite a difficult decision. So I'm gonna create a collection here. We'll call it a 2020 book. And once I've got that empty collection, it's just a matter of going through and having a quick scan through the 197 pictures and just picking out uh, photographs that I think I might want to include. Don't need to be too selective at this point. So, you know, because I will probably go through a number of phases to try and narrow this down a little bit further. So the first part is just a bit of a go through, select anything that's eye-catching and dump it into that collection. So I definitely want those images. I want that black and white. I want that one there from up in Dartmoor. Drag that over to the book collection. And then you just keep going through that until you've got your first pass. So you might, from 197, I expect to get maybe get just over 100 images. And then I'll do a second pass and narrow that down to probably 75 and so on and so on until I've got, I think, a reasonable number, which for this book is about 50 photographs. Once I've got down to about 50 or so photographs, I'm ready to start placing them in the book. Now that's not to say that will be the final 50. I might find that as I lay things out in the book, I might need an additional image to help with a particular layout or theme, or I might find that I'm left, have a picture left over that doesn't really fit into the book, so I might take it out. But the point is, I've got a good starting point, a nice manageable set of images. So once you've got those images selected, it's time to jump into the book software and start placing them and sorting out the layout. As I said at the top of this video, I use Sal Digital to create this photo book. And I'm gonna show you in just a second there what my final layout looks like for the book that I produced. Now the software is really easy to use. It's nice and intuitive, it's a bit drag and drop. You can draw text boxes on and insert other types of objects, which I'll also show you as well. But rather than talk you through that kind of process, which is fairly straightforward, I'll show you how I did the final design for my book and talk about some of the ways that I've uh, laid stuff out and what I've chosen to include. Here we have the front cover. This is a cover that I designed myself. It is based on one of my photographs. I just happened to put my logo and text on it and I did all that in Photoshop. Now, some of the design details that I've got here. So I've got my image laid out in the box here and then I've got the text that goes along with that image. And it's just a description of where it is, when the image was taken, and some of the basic camera settings. And when I was originally laying this book out, I did have the intention of writing a lot of textual descriptions to go along with the image. And then I thought to myself, well, I've actually written quite extensively about most of the photographs that are in this book because I write my blog and I post on it every week. And this is where most of these photographs come from. So rather than rewrite all that text, I thought it'd be better just to link back 
to the original blog article. And that's where these QR codes come in. Now I'll talk about QR codes and how I generated them in a short while. So as we scroll through the book, you can see I've got these, these layouts here. One of the other things I wanna talk about in the book here is the choice of font. So inside this text box, I've used an Exa bold font. Now this is a font that's actually forms part of my logo. So for me, it's part of that branding and identity of the book. I can also insert some of my panoramic photographs. They come out really well in the cell book because it opens up and it lays flat. So those panoramic images look amazing. As we move on to the coast section here, you see that the cover page for this section is in a particular shade of green. And if you're really eagle-eyed, you'll notice that that shade of green is the one that I use in my logo. And this is very purposeful as well. To select the custom color, select the box, click and fill, a little drop down list, color selection, and I can specify uh, the color code here. Now to get the correct color code from my logo, I'm gonna to go to a website called color.adobe.com and in there you can store lots of color profiles and explore color profiles as well. And that what I've done is I've uploaded my logo to that website, it's analyzed it, and it will now give me all the color codes for each of the elements within my logo. So if I go to my logo here, I can see all the different color codes here, and I can just select copy, and then I can just paste that into the cell software, and I've got an exact match for my color, which is really useful, particularly if you want, like I say, for creating that consistent theme and look that matches with your identity. Once I've got all the photographs laid out, and I've got the text put in, it's time to generate the QR codes that I want to have in this book. I'll show you how to do those. As I said earlier, the QR codes will allow me to uh, insert something into the book that I can quickly scan in and then go back to that blog post and have a more detailed read about the story behind that picture rather than including or rewriting all that text for the book. Now, generating QR codes is actually relatively straightforward. Let me show you. So I found this free QR code generator on the internet called QR Code Monkey. Relatively straightforward process. So the first of all, we need to specify the URL. Here we can see my blog. So if I find one of my 2020 posts, let's go for, oh yes, let's go for this one from Sandy Mouth. If I just click on that, I'll just copy the URL. So if I paste in my URL like that, and I can set some custom colors. Again, about that branding and identity for the book, I'm gonna select a custom color for my logo from color.adobe.com. And I'm gonna pick this green color, so click and copy. I'm gonna put the color code in like that. Just paste that in. I want this to be maximum quality. Click and create QR code. And there we go, we've got a custom QR code. So when I scan that in, that will take me straight to that blog post on my website. And that's my QR code downloaded. And then I just go back into the cell software and I just place those in the book where I need them. For my 2020 book, I really wanted to push the boat out when it comes to quality and how I was gonna present the book. Even though I'm the only one that's probably gonna look at this book, I really wanted to make it a bit of a luxury item, something I was gonna celebrate my photography with. So aside from obviously going for the professional line of photo book and the nice acrylic cover and the white leather binding, I decided to also go for one of their presentation gift boxes as well. Uh, so if I jump onto the cell software, I'll show you what I did for that. So I've got my box set up here. Now, one of the reasons I went for white is it actually allows you to place a logo onto the cover that which then gets printed. So it's again about my brand and identity and making this book and everything about it personal to me. In order to do that, I really just had to drag and drop my logo onto there. Now I did have to create the logo the same size as the size of the box. I did that in Photoshop by expanding the size of the image and then just dragging and drop it onto the box layer and it's all done. And then I just add that box to my order to go along with the book and get that ordered up. One last thing I forgot to mention before we have a look at the final product is the importance of proofreading your book. Now, fortunately, the Sal Digital Software has an export preview button. So what it does is it creates a PDF preview of your book. And then what I did was I printed it off like this, and then I went through every single page and I double checked all the text, I cross-referenced it with what was in Lightroom, make sure I got all the settings right, check the pictures and pictures match the text. And I checked all of those QR codes. I scanned them all in to check that it took me to the right blog article on my website. I went through and ticked them off and see sometimes I had a little question mark there about layouts and maybe I might have changed a little picture, but it's just really important to go through there. And it looks like I've maybe got that QR code wrong there. So it was very important and lucky that I did that because I wouldn't have spotted that mistake otherwise. 
I think if you're going to spend a lot of money on a finely crafted luxury photo book, it's really, really important to go through and double check all your work because I guarantee you, you're bound to find at least one mistake. Here we have the final book. And as always with a Sal digital photo book, the output is first class. I really like this professional line of books because of this acrylic cover you got here. It really makes your cover page stand out. As soon as you get that book in the post and you take the wrapping off, it just jumps out at you. You think, oh, I've got something special here. And particularly with the white leather binding. As always, the print quality is brilliant. Just having a look at some of these images here. And again, I think my selection of using that Premium matte paper was a great option. The color reproduction is brilliant. These images look exactly how they look on my monitor. So really happy with the output. And the other good thing about this line of books is that they lay flat. So if you get a really big panoramic image like this, you can lay it out flat and you can really appreciate what that panoramic image looks like. I don't do a lot of black and white photography, but these black and white photographs have come out really well as well. And when you do get bright, colorful images like this one, they don't come out overly saturated. And as a little bonus to myself, I just decided to include a few of my macro photographs as well. But overall, I'm really happy with the book. It's such a great way to celebrate my photography from 2020. And let's face it, 2020 was a bit of a funny year when it came to photography, full of challenges. So it's just nice to have a positive memory from that time. Now, I did also order something else from Sal Digital. Let's talk about that. When I placed my order for the book, as you saw earlier, I also went for this, the optional presentation box in this beautiful white leather here with my custom logo on the front. And the box is absolutely stunning. It's such a fantastic way to store your book. You know, when you open it up and you can see your book inside, it's just really special. And it's, the logo has been beautifully printed there. However, I will say as much as I like this box, it is very expensive. It's quite a price. And I'm not sure whether I'd do it again because of the overhead of the cost. I think if you're something like a wedding photographer and you're producing albums, you could charge your client for this and it'd be a really nice experience. So for me, this might be a one-off. The only thing that might sway me is it's actually quite a big box. So I've actually been able to fit this current 2020 book in it and my retrospective book in it at the same time. So it's a really nice way to keep my books nice and clean and safely while they're on my bookshelf but it is a very much a, a luxury optional extra, but yeah, it does look fantastic. Well, I do hope you have enjoyed this video and it's maybe perhaps inspired you to create your own photography book. And if you do, check out some of the Sal Digital products. I'll include a link for that in the video description below. But for me, printing my work is one of the most important aspects of my photography. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know all about that and how keen I am on printing. So whether that's individual images from a printer or whether you do an annual collection like this for this book, and it's certainly something I'll be definitely doing again next year. But if you've got an extra few minutes, why not check out some of my other videos there? I'll include some links in the corner of the screen. But if you have enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, ask me a question about books or printing. Let me know what you do with your images at the end of each year. But until the next one, I'll see you then.